on this episode of Team Filipinas. Juna Chukili has won her first world-level championship and jumping into Karate's global top 10. She is now making a serious run at a ticket to Tokyo. I'm the most confident now because of that. I, I, I know I can do it. Even my opponent is strong, I can do it. And we look back on the days of glory of Olympian and outstanding female SEA Games athlete, Akiko Thompson Guevara. In all these wonderful opportunities would not have come to me if not for my involvement in sports. And it's also God's hand, right? It has been a long road for Jua Chuki to a top 10 world ranking. She finally got it in Lisbon, Portugal less than two weeks ago. Now that an Olympic spot is within reach, how does she plan to go for it? Nisi Igaziano spoke to her from Arendelovac in Serbia. Welcome to Team Filipinas. I'm Nisi Igaziano. It looks like the Olympic dream of Filipina karateka Juna Chuki is within her reach after capturing the gold medal in Lisbon to elevate to number 8 in the world rankings. She now has the opportunity to bolster her position and punch a ticket to Tokyo in an Olympic qualifier in Paris this coming June. Today, Juno will join us to share how she's going to turn that dream into reality. First of all, Juna, thank you for being on the program and congratulations for winning the gold medal in the 2021 Karate One Premier League. Maraming salamat po. <laughs> well, speaking of that tournament, when you took your final bow after the fight, you seemed to be emotional. What was going through your mind at that very moment? Um, I was looking back uh, on the past uh, I had taken to that point, like uh, I travel alone over the world for the training or <laughs> hard work or anything. So I just, I was looking back for that way. Uh, you won a gold medal in Serbia and recently you won another one. You, you won another one in Portugal, but you started off 2021 on a challenging note by getting eliminated in the qualifiers in, in, in Istanbul, Turkey. Where did you get that drive and motivation to bounce back from that defeat and hold on to your dream of making it to Tokyo? Um, I know uh, it wasn't easy from the time uh, I decided on this challenge because Olympic is uh, everybody aim, everybody do effort for that. So isn't that easy? I know before I decided on this challenge. But uh, I always, and also I always can't sleep after when I losing. Few days I can't sleep from uh, frustrated. <laughs> but uh, uh, I should use that to motivate myself to improve. So sometimes uh, like uh, your feeling is good, is good emo uh, motivate for you for happiness. But sometimes you need also uh, uh, frustrated for you be you make be strong. The recently concluded event in Lisbon hosted a ton of the world's best athletes in karate, including a, including two-time world champion Alexandra Rekia, whom you defeated in the semifinals. Aside from getting a better scouting report, does does this win might give you a much needed boost in confidence and in terms of mental he, mental edge? heading to other international competitions? Yes, yes, uh, uh, exactly that. So now uh, when I come back here, uh, I training, I just rest one day and we keep training again, but I'm the most confident now because of that. I, I, I know I can do it. 
even my opponent is strong, I can do it. So now my feeling also very good. Last year, you made a decision to train in Serbia. And obviously, it's paying off. But in what areas did the training in Serbia help in supplementing your growth and improvement as a karateka? Um, yes, uh, why I choose for Serbia? Because it's coming from over the world, the top players. It's making for me more like uh, be, uh, motivated because I saw to the direct what they do effort for standing this way. So before, only I know my, what I do, but I can show now I can show the what they do for the aiming for the goal. So it's more like uh, inspired inspired me. So that's why I can uh, I need grow because I need catch up them. If you stop your your moving, they, uh, they can easy to leave me because they are so high, stay high than me. But now I try to catch them, catch them. So I keep my hard work, and now uh, it's working. I think. Now that you moved to number eight in the world rankings after winning the gold medal in Lisbon, you are four spots away from entering the top four, which will qualify you for Tokyo. Do you feel that the qualifiers in Paris this June is a must win? Yes, I must win because it's more like a earlier, you can get earlier uh, announcement to you can go to the, you have the ticket. You know, I don't want to wait like a, next way so now most easy way is we must get ticket in paris because i don't want to wait who will go next like that so it's very stress for us so now i just focus to win in paris now how's the progress or oh, how's the progress of your training for the qualifiers in paris yes uh before when i uh play in portugal or istanbul it was my category is 50 below, but in Paris next tournament, I will play more heavy category like uh, and below 55. So my opponent is more tall and more heavy than before now. Before and now uh, I training makes strong my physical and I always think about they have more reach than me. So how I catch them or how block or like that. So I'm, now uh, I'm more training about my mental to fighting with that. How happy are you that you will be joined by other Filipino karatikas in Paris in an attempt to qualify for the Olympics? Yes, uh, we did training maybe one year more ago because now uh, this COVID situation, I can't go back anymore in Philippines. So, but uh, I know they are do also hard work now so i'm very looking forward to see them and uh, i'm very excited to fighting with them in the big tournament karate will make its debut in tokyo and if the fates allow you will be the first athlete to represent the philippines in karate on the olympic stage have you already realized the historical significance of being able to get that chance to represent the country in tokyo Yes, uh, we know, everybody knows that because now in Paris, uh, 2024 Olympics, uh, they remove karate. So we don't know when is the next time if we uh, pass this Tokyo. That's why all people are strict to aiming this goal. But we know that, but you know, it's same, similar like uh, if you want to get gold medal in world champion, also you can, you must go to the Olympics. So for me, it's I know that, but I'm not too much press. I don't have too much pressure about that. I just, <laughs> I'm just excited. Juna, thank you for being with us today and we wish you the best. Thank you so much. You. <laughs> I will do my best. And that's Juna Chuki. I'm Nisi Kashano. Sumasaludo sa Atletang Pilipino. Stay tuned for more sports news and features only here on Team Pilipinas. Bahagi na ng buhay nating mga Pilipino ang sports. Mula sa panahon ng unos, sa tamis ng tagumpay, 
sa kabila ng pagbabago ng buhay, ang Philippine Sports Commission ay patuloy na magigilingkod sa sambayanan at atletang Pilipino. Team Pilipinas, I'm Nisi Casiano. In athletics, three more Filipinos could join EJ Obiena in Tokyo. However, they have until June 29 to make the final cut. We are now joined by Patafa Training Director Renato Nonoy Unso and Patafa National Coach Jeffrey Chua to break down the chances of Eric Cray, Natalie Rose Uy, and Christina Knott to secure a spot in the Olympics. Let's start off with Natalie Rose Uy, Coach Nonoy. At this point, what are her chances of joining EJ in the same event in Tokyo? Natalie Uy, uh, yung performance niya is uh, 4 meters 20, eh, 470 yung, uh, eh, yung uh, standard. Uh, I think, uh, in my honest opinion, eh, mahirapan kang mag-increase ng 50 centimeters within ilang months na lang ngayon. No? And ang qualifying is, uh, tapos na ata yung qualifying by June. So, 50 centimeters uh, may posible, pero mahirap gawin. Uh, Coach Jeffrey, Natalie sustained a wrist injury late last year. If she gets the ticket to Tokyo, is this a cause for concern in her campaign? Yes, definitely. Uh, especially in pole vaulting, Injured yung uh, hand, it's impossible for her to really train that much by holding that pole. Uh, maybe it will cause uh, some uh, concern for her during training and during competition as well. So I agree with uh, Sir Unso, she will be having hard time to really catch up sa standard that uh, she's trying to hit. Coach Nonoy, uh, if Natalie won't make it to Tokyo this year, what are the next steps for her? And where did she fall short in, achieve, in, in achieving her Olympic dream? Uh, alam mo si, like what you said, uh, nagkaroon si Natalie Uy ng uh, injury sa wrist. And uh, ang naging problema is yung sarado yung, yung, sarado yung mga stadium. Eh, ang pole vault, hindi basta-basta. It's not like running na pwede mong gawin sa labas, eh, di ba? Yung pole vault, you need a foam and a landing, landing, yun, landing mat and a pole. Eh, ang hirap pa, nagkaroon siya ng injury sa wrist. So, but anyway, kung hindi man niya, hindi man siya ma-qualify ngayon, and we hope that she will qualify, but kung hindi man ngayon, meron pa naman SEA Games, meron pa naman Asian Games. Now, Coach Jeffrey, now let's turn to Christina Knott. She finished fifth in her most recent competition. Do you think that's enough for her to make the cut? Yeah. Uh, one of the most uh, sought after the Filipino Olympian right now. Uh, we're really trying to support her uh, in terms of uh, boosting her confidence. Kasi a little na lang yan. So I think uh, she can make it with few more competitions in uh, around Italy or in, inside Europe. There might be a chance that uh, she can qualify right away. So I think uh, she has, she said that uh, she has two more competitions to go, then we hope we can uh, join her in Olympic bid. So possible. Coach Nonoy, if not this year, do you believe that with the quality she possesses as an athlete, Christina Not is destined to be an Olympian no matter how long it will take? Definitely, yes. Pero sigurado makaka-join ng Olympics yan kahit hindi niya mahit yung standard eh. Because we have what you call the gender equality. Kapag may na-qualify na lalaki, magpapadala ka ng babae. Pero sa tinatakbo niya, biro mo yung 200 meters siya, is 0.003. Eh, 23.01 na siya eh. Ang i-hit lang niya is 22.8 eh. Isang ano lang yun. Isang sa start lang yun. Now let's talk about Eric Cray. Eric Cray came up with his season's, uh, season's best in Lubbock, Texas, to stay on the hunt for an Olympic berth. Do you think it's still doable on his part, Coach Jeffrey? He has to really double time. No? She has to really work uh, doubly extra. Of course, uh, that's 400. Uh, 
400, then you have to do the hurdling pa. So, of course, everybody's hoping that uh, he can make it. Uh, who knows, uh, there's few, few uh, time tires uh, to go. Again, uh, we're hoping that he can make it. Coach Nonoy, Eric is 32 years old. He said this on record. My biggest challenge is now. My biggest challenge now is I'm getting older. Do you think this is a now or never situation for Eric Gray? I think that's now or never. Because talagang lahat tayo inahabul ng ano? Inahabul ng idad eh. And of course, alam niyo si Eric Gray. Talagang he has determination. Meron siyang determination. But ang problema is economy. Nagtatrabaho pa siya sa Amerika. At at the same time, nagte-training siya. Isang napakahirap na uh, bagay yan na gawin mo. At tapos nagpapakwalify ka in the one of the biggest uh, sports competition, which is the Olympics. Eh, ang hirap gawin. And he also take care of the family. Napakahirap gawin niya sa Amerika. But we're hoping that uh, he can make it. Coach Jeffrey, do you agree? Yes, I totally agree. Yeah. Uh... You cannot really do two things at the same time at your best. So support your family, uh, support your work, and then at the same time aiming for Olympics. Pero that's a quality of a hardworking Filipino. Just uh, talagang uh, his desire to to hit the standard, to hit the uh, Olympic uh, game right away. Ano yah? Uh, it's a tall order for him, but uh, he's doing it for for himself and for the Filipinos also. Uh, coaches, if you'll be given the chance to pick one among the three hopefuls, which athlete do you think is ripe for the Olympics and deserving to join EJ Obiena and other Philippine Olympians in Tokyo? Let's start with Coach Jeffrey. In the men's side, we have already qualified. Eh? We have one men qualified, which is uh, who is uh, EJ Obiena. So for the women's side, it's, a, it's still an open uh, a slot, meaning... Uh, if, if nobody can hit the standard right away, maybe, maybe Patafa or True Sir Unso can uh, nominate uh, either not, uh, na either Christina Nat or maybe Natalie. Oh, it depends on them. Eh. But once, uh, at, I think uh, to, uh, to answer your question, Natalie, uh, Christina Nat has the highest uh, chance of getting to the Olympics right away. Coach Nonoy, take it away. I agree. I agree na si Christina Nat and uh, she's performing really well sa kanyang competition. At alam nyo, may mga ranking yan. Eh. May mga point system silang uh, uh, nilalagay eh. Eh, para ma-qualify sa Olympics kung hindi mo siya na, na-hit yung standard. May mga point system. Eh. I think si Christina ang most qualified. By looking at the records EJ Obiena broke and how he performs right there and then, you can say he is a special athlete, but let's dissect it a bit as to how he is a one-of-a-kind talent. Coach Nonoy, what are the distinct qualities that set EJ apart from others? Si EJ, uh, for me, sobrang focus yung bata na yan. Eh. Uh, just to give you an example, uh, nag-leave of absence yan para lang makapag-training ng Paul Bolt. And sa school, ah, uh, biro mo, nagsakripisyo siya na mag of absence para mag-training. And hindi ko alam kung tatlo o dalawang Christmas na siya hindi siya kasama ng kanyang mga magulang. So ganun ka-focus si EJ. Eh, he's not only talented sa academe but also sa kanyang uh, specific sports, pole ball. Uh, Coach uh, Jeffrey, the pandemic has put a dent on the activities of every athlete preparing for Tokyo. But EJ managed to continue training as well as compete. Coach Jeffrey, do you think that gives EJ a slight edge heading to Tokyo? Kung sino yung medyo lamang sa ensayo, lamang sa opportunity, which is yung may landing pit or meron siyang uh, training area, so medyo nakakalamang. So what aspects should EJ work on? He has basically less than three months to prepare. Alam naman natin na sa pandemic o, oh, konti yung competition. Eh. But yung kanilang mga team managers uh, dun sa Fornia, where EJ is training, eh, hinahanap talaga sila ng competition. And uh, to give you 
a good example kasama ni EJ si Chag uh, si Chago yung uh, uh, gold medalist ng pole vault sa Olympics. So napakaganda kung may competition si Chago kasi isang training camp lang sila eh. Nakakapunta ron si EJ. Can you agree that having Vitali Petrov in his corner is a game changer in his development as an athlete? As we all know, Coach Vitali Petrov is well known uh, across all over the world, no? So we are very fortunate enough to have uh, him around with uh, EJ Obiena. We will uh, learn so much. We, we, uh, as much okay. as possible, we can absorb. That's why sometimes Coach Emerson, his father coach, is always uh, in communication with Coach Vitali. The transfer of knowledge directly from the great Vitali. So wala tayong talo dun in terms of transfer of knowledge directly being given to our EJ Obiena. And then someday, of course, yung Philippine pole vaulting will surely benefit from it. Pinakamaganda kay Vitali is not only he has the experience, but he has the he has the power to uh, give plenty of competition to the pole vaulters. They travel sa buong ano Europe. Eh. Yun ang maganda kay Vitali connections. He has the connection. He has the talent. Matalino, magaling. So yun ang yun ang nagbibigay ng confidence kay EJ na nakita niya na binibigyan silang halaga ng isang world champion coach. So yun I think is one of the best uh, na magiging advantage. Now, let's talk about the opposition in Tokyo. What do you think or which country do you think will give EJ a tall order? Let's let's start with coach Nonoy. Ang pinakamalakas na magiging kalaban niya I of course, yung si Duplantis, yung uh, world record holder ngayon, which is 6.18 meters. And of course, nandiyan si Thiago. But hindi rin ako nawawala ng uh, ano kay EJ, ng, ng, ng kumpiyansa. Kasi itong bata na to nagsimula talaga sa napaka-baba eh. Uh, hanggang sa naging uh, Southeast Asian champion, naging Asian, one of the Asia's best. At ngayon, as nasa ranking siya, I think si EJ nasa number... 17 or something like that in the world. So, yun yung malaking kumpiyansa ko na kahit na malalakas yung kalaban ni EJ ngayon sa Tokyo Olympics, eh, magpuproduce tayo ng uh, medal sa pole ball. In jumping events, especially horizontal events, uh, high jump and pole ball, there is a slim chance of uh, masiro yung mga kalaban. Eh. There's a big chance. Eh. This is a uh, well documented uh, the past uh, great Paul Volters nasisiro sila sometimes so there is a slim possibility that EJ if uh, kumbaga luck or the the suerte comes into his way he might uh, get into the top 3 by looking at the caliber the caliber of opposition that he beat at the Ostrava Golden Spike meet in September 2020 do you think coach Jeffrey do you think do you think EJ will be the one to finally bring home the first gold medal for the, for the country? Yes, uh, in that merit alone, uh, as you can see, he has a big chance talaga to, to get that uh, podium place. No? We're not discounting uh, the gold. Huh? We're not discounting the silver. That's, uh, we're aiming for that. Uh, EJ is aiming for that. You see, that's height. Eh. So as I said a while ago, you will never know until uh, you go there. Do you think the, the medal in the Olympics is the last remaining prerequisite for athletics or pole, pole vaulting, uh, in, in this case, to finally skyrocket. Ay, oo naman. And uh, EJ has proven that he is one of the best in the world. Itong mga nakaraang competition, eh, tinalo niya yung mga, yung mga champion. Eh, kasama na si Chago. Eh. So, I think uh, isang malaking factor yon so, kung manalo tayo. Ng, uh, sa pole vault ng medal or gold medal sa Olympics eh talagang katulad din niya ng weight training katulad noon yung mga billiard di ba sila Efren Batare eh, talagang sumikat at lumakas yung mga performer ang uh, mga athletes natin and I hope that will help Coach Jeffrey Coach Nonoy thank you and glad to have you on the program today Bahagi na ng buhay nating mga Pilipino ang sports.
mula sa panahon ng unos, sa tamis ng tagumpay, sa kabila ng pagbabago ng buhay, ang Philippine Sports Commission ay patuloy na magigilingkod sa sambayanan at atletang Pilipino. Hello, I'm Dennis Principe for Team Pilipinas and for today we will be talking about the sports of squash. Uh, isa po sa mga sports na masabi natin na unti-unti ay uh, gumagawa na rin po ng magandang pangalan sa larangan po ng Philippine sports and uh, joining us no, para pag-usapan palalo no, ang beauty ng kanyang uh, sport ang squash is the first ever Filipino uh, both uh, male and female na makapasok po sa top 100 ng world rankings Jamaica Arribado Jamaica magandang uh, araw sa iyo at welcome sa Team Pilipinas uh, Hello po magandang hapon din po at salamat po sa pag-invite Okay, and uh, Jamaica, narinig mo yung intro ko sa'yo, no? Na bihira yes, yung ganong sport, no? Na ikaw lang nag-iisa, namumukutangay sa babae at sa lalaki. Kapag ka narinig mo yun, uh, although medyo matagal na rin yun, it's been a uh, few years na nakuha mo yun. Right now, eh, gano'n ba na nafe-feel mo pagka narinig mo yung ganong achievement? Um, Siyempre po, masaya kasi... Uh, Matagal ko na po kasing dream na makapag-compete po, professional. 2016 po nung pumasok ako ng pro. And syempre po, hindi po mangyayari yun kung hindi po dahil sa approval and tulo and support po nung president po namin, which is uh, Robert Bachman po. Yan, malaking bagay po siya sa, sa, sa amin. Ayun po, masaya kasi po, hindi po madali makapasok doon, especially hindi naman po uh, kilala yung Niyo. Pero I'm uh, super thankful po na napagbigyan ng chance and for me, worth it po. And uh, Jamaica, um, alam mo sa sa Pilipinas, no, pagka, usually pagkababaihan, ang sport niyan, right now, number one, uh, volleyball. No? Uh, unti-unti yung uh, women's boxing, ano? nandiyan na rin. Yung mga Apo. contact sport, marami Apo. na sa kababaihan, no? karate, yes, taekwondo. Ikaw, bakit yun na napili mo na a sport na siguro para uh, karamihan sa mga kababayan natin ay hindi pa talaga masyado alam ang sport na yun dahil alam na ang yes squash po. pagkain. Yes po. <laughs> Totoo po. Opo. Sa volleyball, di po kasi ako katangkaran. Um, si- uh... Ayun nga po, lagi ko pong sinasabi, uh, main reason po kung bakit nasa ra- racket sports po ko. Dahil po dun sa father ko. So, um, yung father ko po kasi naglalaro, trainer po siya ng tennis sa mga sports club. So, parang kami, during, uh, nung bata po kami, po kasi kami kinapalabas ng bahay. Uh, so, ang ginagawa po ng father ko, palagi na lang po kami niyang dinadala dun sa club kung saan po siya nag-work. Every summer po, may summer clinic po ng tennis, badminton, and squash. Palagi po kami nag-join doon. Kahit, kahit saan po na ano, uh, racket sports. Kaya po, kaya doon din po ako napunta. And then, ayun nga po, uh, nung natry ko po yung sports uh, na squash, unique and ano, talaga pong sabi na po natin na na-fall na na-follow ko dun sa sport and ang dami ko pa pong gustong ma-achieve at uh, talagang gustong gusto ko po siya uh, yun po, kaya po ako napunta sa squash mm-hmm. um, yung nabanggit mong kwento no? uh, yes po ka, no? um, common yan marami nangyayaring gano'n no? yung mga magulang, dinadala yung anak Karamihan nga, iba, sinasabi, nagpapwersa, no, meron mga anak na pipilitan. Eventually, pag, pagka, yun nga, nagdalaga, nagpinata, iba, tinutuloy, iba, hindi. Sa iba, iba simula ba, ganun din, may struggle din, parang na, kahit paano pinilit mo rin yung sarili mo, para lang sumunod ka sa gusto ng father mo? Uh, sa akin po, hindi. 
sa amin po kasi magkaka sa amin po kasi magkakapatid. Lahat po kami talaga, yung iba po nag-tennis, tapos yung iba din po nag-squash. Ako po talaga, hindi, hindi po ako nag-stop. Pero may mga times po na dumating na talagang nag-struggle din po ako, nahirapan ako. Pero yung father ko po kasi talaga ano eh, sobrang ma-push po po siya. Hindi ka po talaga niya tutukuan. Kahit kikisingin ka niya sa umaga. And tsaka yung time nga po na nabubuhay pa siya, talagang kahit sa training ko po, andyan siya, palagi siyang nanonood. Binabantayan ako, sasamahan po ako kung saan pag kaso ng mga requirements na kailangan, mga ganun po. So, ako po talaga nagustuhan ko po talaga yung sports. So, um, it's good right now yung sport, uh, sila alam na, but early part of your career, nabagit mga 2016 ka uh, mo na-achieve, no? uh, yung uh, pumasok ka sa top 100 ng World Rankings, but around that time, I would like to think na medyo mahihirap sa sport mo dahil mahihirap po mo ng sponsor and everything, support ha. But uh, ganun ba yung, secret, yung naging situation mo? And kung ganun man, what made you stick dito sa uh, sport na to para ituloy mo uh, hanggang sa umabog ka nga sa pagiging uh, top, one of the top 100 players uh, in the world? Uh, okay po. Uh, bali, 2016 po ako nung pumasok sa nagregister sa propo pero less than a year po less than a year lang po nakapasok na po sa top 100 opo bali um, masasabi ko po uh, one of the reason kung bakit po ako nagpapatuloy and, and bakit mas madami pa po kung gusto uh, dahil din po yun part po nung pag-struggle ko yung nagpapapush po sa bali parang nung time po kasi na nandyan yung father ko uh, yun po yung mga isang bagay na tinuro niya sa akin. Kaya parang the more po na nahihirapan ako, parang the more po na gusto kong lumabas. Like katulad nga po ng sabi niyo, ang hirap, ang hirap po, ang hirap po na uh, makakuha ng sponsor, ganyan. Actually po, dumating po ako sa point na ako na po talaga gumagawa ng paraan. Para po makapag-compete ako. Um, kasi... Kung tutusin, hindi naman po talaga pwede na lahat na lang po iaasa nyo sa, sa PSC, di ba po? And, and especially yung, yung president po namin, as in, uh, lahat po ginagawa niya para sa amin. So parang ako po, uh, minsan, pag di po kaya na ng budget or hindi, po na, hindi na po kayang i-approve ng PSC, ako na po mismo, gumagawa po ako ng parang Kasi yun din po yung ginagawa ng father ko before, nung bata pa po. Hinahanapan niya po ako ng mag sponsor sa akin ng raketa or kaya ng shoes ko po. So parang sa kanya ko po nakuha yung idea na yun. Kaya, no, kaya po, yung mga tournament ko po na iba, ako na po actually yung gumagastos dun. Parang kung an, yung inipon ko po yung sarili kong pera o kaya kumukuha din po ako ng uh, ibang tao po na pwedeng tumulong sa akin. Ayun nga po, ganun po yung ginagawa kaya din po. Naka, malaking, bag, malaking tulong din po yun para tumas po yung ranking ko. Okay, and uh, with that, uh, maram salamat sa'yo, uh, Jemai Caribado, and uh, good luck. Yes po. Yeah. Thank you po, maraming salamat po sa pag-invite. And we look back on the days of glory of Olympian and outstanding female SEA Games athlete, Akiko thompson Giva. You know, all these wonderful opportunities would not have come to me if not for my involvement in sports. And it's also God's hand, right? Bahagi na ng buhay nating mga Pilipino ang sports. Mula sa panahon ng unos, sa tamis ng tagumpay, Sa kabila ng pagbabago ng buhay, ang Philippine Sports Commission ay patuloy na magiging sa sambayanan at atletang Pilipino. partnership between the Philippine Sports Commission and the Commission on Higher Education was formalized earlier this year. 
building our educational infrastructure in sports will be greatly helped by a new law that brings the PSC and education sector together with the National Academy of Sports. The responsibility of CHED in the National Sports Academy is to make sure that the curriculum that they take in the secondary level can easily be connected to whatever degree the student athletes would want to, to take when they go to the higher education level. So in curriculum ng National Sports Academy, there should be a seamless transition from secondary school to higher education. Uh, so that is part of the whole framework of uh, DepEd, CHED, PSC working together in creating a smooth transition from K to 12 to higher education in the uh, sports development of athletes, okay? It will also mean, as I said earlier, we will work with the PSC on uh, uh, developing a continuing uh, professional development program for coaches. Uh, that, is, uh, that is an urgent uh, matter that we have to work on because uh, I have noticed, for example, in many uh, public and private universities in the higher education level, that their coaches are PE teachers. And the PE teachers are graduates of the Bachelor of Science in elementary or high school or uh, secondary education, with specialization in sports. Or their PE teachers are former uh, school athletes that have gone back to coaching. Okay, uh, we have to address that particular uh, sector because we have to continuously train them and create a certification level for them so that there is continuous development, benchmarking with best practices abroad. That is an urgent matter that is part of the collaborative uh, uh, activity between uh, PSC and, uh, and uh, CHED. No? Number three, uh, I have discussed with uh, Chairman Butch the need to focus on uh, the uh, development of the assets of universities, particularly in sports. Uh, designing and managing sports facilities. Medyo mahina tayo dyan. I, I, and I think you know that, Bill, when you go to the different universities all over, the track and field ovals, you know, medyo hindi up to uh, uh, standards, you know, yung design niyan, uh, th that is a very technical and there is science needed to it and the expertise may not be available uh, in many parts of the country. So we have to do an asset inventory, asset management of the, of the sports facilities of our universities. We also have to generate data about the sports programs of our universities. There was already a law passed uh, in the last Congress requiring all uh, higher education institutions to submit their sports programs, sports expenditures. The IRR has been finished by CHED. It is being implemented now. Why the need to put all of these reports and data together? Uh, some of the universities initially were hesitant and alarmed because they were concerned that they will be giving information you know, from what they're doing. I said, this is to help everyone because when we map out across both public and private universities, the types of sports activities, the resources that you allocate to it, we will get a very good picture of where government can come in and assist. Because now, government is blind when it wants to assist the sports development of universities because they don't have the data. They, it is not evidence-based decision-making. You want to invest in developing the sports facilities? Uh, you don't know what is the condition of the track and field oval or the basketball court. You don't know how much was spent for it, how much is needed to spend for it. You cannot benchmark versus other universities that have been able to establish their facilities, you know, at the same cost. They do not know who are the good uh, designers. So if we have this data, which we will share with the Philippine Sports Commission, 
government assistance will be better targeted. The resources will be better spent because we know where to spend it, how to spend, how to monitor, and how to hold our universities accountable for the use of public funds. So very important to you, meron tayong data across the board. Uh, for example, we ask the question, bakit ang Lasal, ang Ateneo, ang gaganda ng sports program nila? We, we've got to learn from the good schools. Uh, how much are they spending? How are they investing their resources? How are they managing their facilities? All of that, you, you must get data to, to uh, map that out. And then you must have continuous capacity building for the universities to teach them how to benchmark and how to do it on their own. Yun namang mga presidente ng mga state universities and smaller private universities. Uh, of course, they're very good managers, but you know, sports management is a very different field. You know? <laughs> Baka wala silang expertise na ganun, or their officials don't have the expertise to do it. So that is where CHED and the Philippine Sports Commission can provide assistance. So there are many other areas, but we're very problem-driven. Ano yung mga immediate na kailangan gawin na ng PSC at saka CHED? Thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, that's uh, quite a bit to digest, and I look forward to seeing all these programs come through. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Always a pleasure to uh, talk to you. The greatest legends of Philippine sports are recognized by just one name. Lydia, Elma, Paeng, Akiko. Akiko Thompson Guevara's breathtaking career catapulted swimming into the mainstream and inspired generations of aspiring mermaids. Now, she continues to give back to all sports in as many ways as she can. Thank you very much, Boyet. Akiko, to begin with, what was the attraction of swimming to you? It was just one of actually many different activities I did growing up, but I took to the water. Um, my siblings were doing it with me, so it was fun to be with them. I'm very competitive by nature, so I like that aspect of it. Um, but yeah, it, it, it was just a fun thing in the beginning, and I just really, um, it, it developed from there through the years. Right, and you are the uh, second youngest uh, Filipino athlete to make it to the Olympics as a kid, you know, because you were just a kid then. What, what, what was that like to walk into the Olympics as a competitor? I was very wide-eyed, every, every, as you say, everything, I was just like, wow, everything was just a large scale. But I guess also the, the good thing about it, I didn't know what to expect. And I was very, you know, my coach was like my second, second uh, father and I just followed instructions really well. Uh, did you, did it, uh, you know, bother you when you realized, you know, everybody's older, bigger, stronger, no, faster than me? No, you know what, I just, Again, I, I, you know, I, I did whatever my coach told me I was going to do. I went out there, I swam so-and-so, and, and yeah, so it was, and I guess, you know, Bill, it, you know, previous to that, I had been at the, uh, the Southeast Asian Games, and there was a Southeast Asian age group. So, you know, it's it's a similar format, but in a, in a lar much larger scale. So you're kind of one step, the next step, a little bigger. And uh, so, yes, of course, I was very... Uh, it was large, it was, it was nervous, it was, you know, there were nerves and everything, but um, I, I'm a good soldier, you know, and so, you know, I take orders well and I execute, just do it, you know, do it. All right. And then, and, uh, you know, a few years after that, of course, the SEA Games uh, came to Manila uh, in 1991, and that was probably your most uh, indelible performance. What was that experience like? competing here in front of the home crowd. Awesome, really just, that's the best gift, I think, experience of, for a, a, an athlete to have is to, to compete in front of the uh, home, in home territory because the support, it's just wild. And the energy is, is 
So, you know, nakaka, ano, your, your hair just stands up. And especially with a sport like swimming, that it's not like basketball that enjoys a lot of fans and people come yeah. watch them. Yeah. You don't get any of that. And, and I, the, pool, the stadiums are rarely packed. So just having, you know, uh, seeing all that and, and then hearing them chant our names was just surreal. Really, it's, it's one of the best. I'm so blessed to, you know, to have been able to participate in those sea games in particular. And I remember you were telling me that, uh, you know, since the tennis court was right behind you, the crowds were sort of like, you know, cheering with room, each on other. The roof. <laughs> on the roof, other people on the roof. And then because LaSalle was right beside, the students were up on top. You could see them watching over, uh, you know, peering in. And it's just, it's... That just just boosts your 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 makes you all the more want to deliver. Mm -hmm. And you were you were already the the outstanding female athlete of the games, and yet uh, I recall you saying something like you were blaming yourself when when the country came short yeah. in the overall championship. Yeah, well, because I you know at, the, at those games I won two golds and two silvers, individual medals at least, medals at least, and I, I it was an experience that I had at the where we were staying, the bellboy said to me, Mom, bakit ka nag second? And I just felt like, oh, I let him <laughs> down. I let, I let, I let, I felt like I let people down. And then, you know, it's no, it's, obviously it's not, that's not what, what was meant, but that's what I felt hearing that. And, and then on top of that, uh, you know, the, the, we, we lose the overall by one, so one medal, one gold. So, you know, then, then you're thinking, oh, man, it could have been I just want, and they're at the, in, the, in the sprint event. So all these events are like point hundreds of a second. So, you, you know, it's just you put a lot of, you, you blame yourself. You guys had, had laid such a great foundation for the sport. It had become really mainstream. Uh, you know, you inspired so many little girls to start jumping into the water. What did you think would happen after you guys retired? I don't know. I, I, I don't think, Bill, honestly, I don't think I really um, thought of that. I, 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 I guess, you know, of course, you, you know, you hope that you inspire a new generation of people who want to, I, you know, I have to say Jasmine was someone I knew from as a little girl. I actually went to her very first international competition in Japan. Wow. Uh, she was she was like 11 years old, I think it was, and it was a Japanese coach. I, I, his name slips me uh, slips my mind right now, but I was an assistant helping out. And yeah, so that was really it, it was it's it's been really fun to see her um, blossom as an athlete because I feel very I feel very much invested in, in her and um, happy to see that I guess I, I, I so again going back to your question I don't know that I was really consciously thinking about it but but I was you know uh, I really enjoyed uh, kind of walking side not no walking literally side by side but watching someone like Jasmine just really um, go places okay well, lastly you know since you retired you've really just been giving back to sports in so many ways. You were a commissioner of the Philippine Sports Commission. You're working actively with the Philippine Olympians Association, and uh, you know you're you're working with the Special Olympics. Why is it that you know what is it that keeps on driving you to keep giving back to sports? Well, Bill, it's it's really formed who I am, um, and it's really directed the course of my life. You know, soon after college, I came back. I entered media, but in sport, I was hosting a sports show. And all these wonderful opportunities would not have come to me if not for my involvement in sports. And it's also God's hand, right, Bill? I mean, you know, the special whole Special Olympics thing, if it weren't for my daughter who was born, I, and when she came into my life, I knew I would be, I would be a voice in this world. I would do something at some point. I just didn't know what it was. Um, and when the Special Olympics opportunity came up, uh, it was just, I mean, perfect, right? Sports and special needs merging. And so that's why I got involved in that. But it's, it's all, I mean, I think it's a progression, right? My, I initially was, I was giving back, swimming, first thing. And then, 
you know, I, the Philippine Olympians was started. And of course, you know, that's a, I've been so blessed. I sat on that, sat on that board. And, and yeah, I don't know, you know, I guess, Bill, when you're so blessed, you want to, you want, there's so much to share, to give. Yeah. Thanks for your time, Akiko. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks for keeping it short and sweet, Bill. <laughs> All right. Take care. See you soon. And that's this week's episode of Team Pilipinas. I'm Boy at Season. Join us every Saturday at 4 p.m. only here on PTV. Para sa bayan. And always remember, we are all on the same team. We are all Team Pilipinas. See you next week.